All right, guys. So I got another uh, musket from Veteran Arms. This is the first lamp pattern, brown bass. I figured I would do an unboxing video. Uh, I did cut the tape and everything off already, so it'll be pretty easy to get to. This is a pretty long box. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to fit everything in the camera or in the in the lens, but so I didn't actually open open. I just tried to cut the box up. All right, well, this is how it comes with uh, thousands of peanuts. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to pull the musket out because it's going to make a mess. All right, this is taking quite a minute, but I wanted to show you that underneath the uh, bubble wrap here, it's actually wrapped in a plastic bag. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. The ramrod was down in the barrel, so I had to get that out. I can tell you right now, this is gonna get replaced. This feels pretty flimsy. Um, <clears throat> the stock looks nice. I they definitely has a different finish on it than the Char Charleville did. Got the nice brass inlay there. Really like that. And what I like about this one even better, or uh, what I like about this one more is it's actually got markings in the lock plate that Charlottesville doesn't have any. So there's not really, there's a little bit of a gap there, but I don't, I don't think any powder will get down there. It's hard to tell, but it looks like the flash hole is drilled straight this time instead of at an angle as with the Charlottesville, which I'm actually really happy about that. Oh yeah, that one definitely looks like it seals a lot better. We still see a little bit of a gap on this side of the frizzin. Um, but this definitely seals better. Good sparks. Uh, yeah, uh, overall, I think this is much, much better than the Charleville. Um, much better. Let's see here, once this gun is kind of hard to get a pan on. Give me one second here. So I'm not sure what finish is on the stock, but that's definitely more of a shellac finish or something. Uh, lock plate is dirty. You can see there, there is a bunch of crud down there. Not sure. Pan's dirty still as well. I guess from them testing it. Or not test firing, but you know, adjusting the frizzing and stuff. Overall, I definitely think this is much, much better than the uh Charlottesville was. It's not a front sight, that's your bayonet lug, but it looks like that is on pretty straight. Stock is nice, real nice. I love the brass fitting on it. Oh, and you know what? Also, let's cock that again. Trigger feels so much better. I bet you this is probably an eight pound trigger, seven pound trigger. This trigger feels so much better than the Charlottesville. <clears throat> yeah, this gun is a night and day difference uh, between this and the Charlottesville. This is a really nice gun. I'm really happy with this. I will try to take a picture of that little gap there. I don't know if anything will fit down there or not. Like I said, uh, in the pan, it's got to be hard to get it. No, there's no way. Nope. 
There's no way nothing's getting down there, especially 2F. No, this is definitely a gorgeous gun. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, and like I said, this is the only thing that's kind of iffy. This doesn't even have the same finish on it. This is super flimsy. I don't know if you can see it flexing or not. That's okay. Uh, I already knew I was going to probably have to replace this. We're going to place an order tonight on Track of the Wolf for a, a ramrod that I can use. <clears throat> but, uh, geez, I really wish the shore would have came out like this. This is, this is awesome. Very nice. Very pleased with it. Everything looks good. Like I said, did check that gap. The only thing I will say, and I have to pull the lock plate off, but yes, you can still see some light down on this side of the frizzin. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't really on the camera, but on this side of the frizzin, still see some light, so it doesn't seal up 100%. <sighs> but that's okay. I'm not gonna fret over that. Um. Yeah, very happy with it. I can't wait to get out and shoot it. I like I said, I love the brass here and on the butt plate. This gun is whoo, definitely nice. <laughs> I'm happy with it. I'm very, very happy with it. Very pleased with it. Like I said, this is a night and day difference. Holy cow. Wasn't super thrilled with the Char or the Charleville. This one, though, definitely re uh, makes me want to buy more from them for sure. So, anyways, I'm going to attempt to box the Charleville up and that other box and send it back. Uh, so they can fix the gap between the barrel and the bolster. Um, and then try to maybe see if they can get them to fix the gap here between the uh, frizzin and the pan on the Charlottesville, not on this thing. But uh, other than that, definitely very, very pleased with it. Very happy. Uh, I ordered this. It said it was in stock. It took about two weeks um, to get here. So... Uh, that's fine. I know they got a drilled the vent hole and stuff. And I'm very glad that the vent hole in this one is drilled straight through. Unlike the Char that has drilled at the angle. It's not a big deal, but it's easier to get something in there to prick it with than on an angle. The Charleville tends to, to bend my uh all my pricks pretty good. So I decided to do a little test quick and I figured I might as well just do it on camera. So what I'm going to do, I just I have 2F here. I prime with 2F. Like I said, there's a tiny, tiny little gap there. Still new to flintlocks. I don't know exactly how much of a gap there should be. Uh, I would imagine it's all but impossible to get that perfect. <clears throat> That's actually one of the things that is good about percussion. They actually change that. And they put the bolster on the barrel. It's all machined one piece. So you don't have to worry about a gap. Um, but let's see here once I'm gonna put just a couple, a little bit of, uh, 2F in there. We're going to close the frizz in. We're going to shake it. We're going to beat that down just to see. I'm just curious to see if that'll go down there or not. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Let's uh, dump that out. Okay. Now what we're going to do... I'll get this thing turned around. We're just going to pull the lock off real quick and see if any fell down through there. Again, like I said, I'm new to flint lock, so I'm not exactly sure. I'm testing things out, just trying to learn how things should be. <clears throat> These screws are even much nicer than the screws on the uh, Charleville. Everything about this gun is nicer. Okay, let's see if that'll. The inlaying kind of sucks, but that's all right. No, I don't see any. I don't see any powder down there. That all needs cleaned out, obviously. Uh, they didn't do a very good job on that, but 
that is not a big problem to fix. I'm glad there's no, no powder down there. So that'll work. There's a little bit on the side there, but that just came from me taking the lock plate off. That's no big deal. <clears throat> that just needs to be cleaned up a little bit better is all. So very excited about that. And then here's my prick I was telling you about. You see how it's kind of bent from the other, from the Charleville. Just get that in there. Yeah, I'm all, that's awesome how that just goes straight in. Perfect. Okay. Thanks for watching.